What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Alright, this story's called, Try to Stiff Rent Money Owed? Enjoy having your drug habit exposed and losing your new house. Hello again, everyone. I've another story from my dad, and he allowed me to share it here. Honestly, when I first heard it from him, I thought it would be a petty revenge, but the consequences were much more than that. So I'll assume it'll be r slash pro revenge material. The story. My dad had tried his hand in renting out houses, albeit it's only one house and he had only had one renter. He's a soft heart and couldn't bear to force a family onto the streets when rent wasn't paid. The renter was his work colleague, and they were acquainted at best. This man would give every excuse in the book when he couldn't pay his rent all of them relating to his toddler son. Medical bills for his son, formula and diapers, birthday gifts, so on and so forth. My dad accepted these excuses, allowing his colleague to delay the payment and never once tried to deduct from the deposit. Six months later, his renter decided to move out. Turns out the jackass bought himself a nice terrace house out in a good suburban area. He knew my dad was a patient and generous man and decided to take advantage of that. My dad, in his words, was pissed, but more than that, disappointed. He decided that he'll stop renting as he figured he would lose more than what he'll earn. Thus, the house was sold. A few days later, my dad approached his colleague wanting to know why he'd stiffed him out of his rent money. This took place in the middle of the office with everyone still at their cubicles or milling around. Colleague, I've heard you've bought a house. If you had money for the house, why couldn't you pay for the rent? You know or not, my son keeps falling sick. Ever since I stayed at that house you rent, my son always has a fever, always coughing. What has that got to do with me or that house? I think I know why. That house is haunted. Got gin. Oh, Muslim. <laughs> Genie, malevolent or mischievous. And Shaitan which means devil, demon, or literally just Satan. You're a new Muslim convert, right? Something must have been pissed at you for converting. Because of that, my son is suffering. For context, us Malaysians still hold on to some superstition. Though it's more prevalent in the older generations, be it due to culture or religion, superstitious beliefs are still embedded here. A rented house being haunted usually means little to no potential renters and a sullied reputation. This ticked my dad off. At this point, everyone had tuned into this drama being unfolded. Raising his voice, he laid down the truth bomb. I stayed in that house for two years with my wife and small children. Nothing happened. You know why your son keeps falling sick? When I went to inspect that house to sell it, the whole place reeked of drugs. Every room in the house smells like marijuana. Your son keeps falling sick because you smoke drugs around him 24-7. If you ever been slammed by the truth so hard that it left you speechless, that was essentially what happened. Colleague was stunned, mouth opening and closing like a fish gasping for breath, before turning around and walking away. My dad, having vented that, left to do his own business. Colleague not denying outright that he didn't do drugs caused the rumor to spread like wildfire, with him ending up needing to do a drug test. Unsurprisingly, he failed that, which led him to being let go. Now, you may think that's the end. Drug use in Malaysia is seriously frowned upon here, even if you do it recreationally. Not to mention that other job prospects usually look into your record and reason for resigning your last job. Having been let go due to failing a drug test is an automatic resume into the bin. No job means no income. No income means colleague can't make the monthly installments for his new house. As my dad found out, it has been auctioned off by colleague's bank to another buyer. As he told me this, my dad never wanted to ruin colleague's life like that. 
He told me he should have just kept his mouth shut, that him knowing Colleague was doing drugs in close proximity to his son was good leverage for Colleague to pay his rent. It was a in the heat of the moment action and such. Dad never pressed to get his six months of rent money back, considered it halal, meaning in his eyes, Colleague's debt to him was voided. I don't know. Perhaps this was just karma by God for colleague lying to my dad and stiffing him his rent money. Just needed my dad to be a pawn in his plan to punish colleague in this life. The revenge was undeniably unplanned. But goddamn is it pro to me. Oh yeah, most Muslims in like any Asian country are super superstitious. Literally, my cousins from New York uh, believe that their apartment is haunted, and they stand by the fact that they have had multiple paranormal experiences, but uh, of course I'm skeptical because the power of suggestion is powerful as hell. Just the mere belief that something is haunted will turn that weird noise you heard down the hallway from uh, just the floorboards creaking with uh, the humidity the fluctuations into uh, a ghost demon or urgin if you will trying to claw your nuts out or something but op's dad what a guy all right this story's called me and karen a love story just kidding karen is a total mean person but buckle up because here is my novel my husband and I are in our late 30s and child-free. Some people on child-free said I should post here too, so enjoy the saga. My husband and I have been saving up for almost a decade to move to a tropical paradise. About two years ago, we bit the bullet and moved to our dream location. Housing here is super expensive, like Hawaii prices, so all we could afford was half of a duplex. It's beautiful and on the water with places for our boat. Unfortunately, Karen, Billy Bob, the boyfriend, and her three gremlins live in the other unit. Set up. There is some period of time we just went for a week here and there, but we live here full time now. The entire duplex was owned by an older gentleman who rented out both sides. The sides do not match at all. One side is a five-bedroom, three-bath. The other side of the duplex is a two-bedroom, one-bath. We bought the five-bedroom. On our side of the property, we have 90% of the backyard, a gazebo, and dockage, about 150 feet since it is on a corner. The other side has a small backyard, patio, and maybe 15 feet of dockage. Damn. The rental leases say the renters are entitled to their specific backyards, but there were no fences or anything. So all the renters shared the entire backyard. After we bought the house, Karen immediately tried to throw her weight around that they expected to continue with that privilege. I told her if she asked politely, we would try to accommodate her. She thought this meant she could use our backyard whenever she wanted. Party incident. One day, my husband and I are enjoying some drinks outside when a delivery truck shows to set up a giant blow-up thing in our backyard. I asked Karen whatever she thought she was doing, and she said it was her kid's birthday. Then she had the gall to say it was a family and friends only event. So we had to stay inside our house. Not wanting to be a total butthole and ruin some little girl's birthday, I told Karen after this, she had no access to our backyard, period. Karen shrugged and kept setting up for the party. During the party, a drunk adult wandered into our house, which shocked us all. I said Karen's house is the other side, and he said, Oh, uh, Karen said she owned the whole property and to use whichever bathroom was available. I directed him to Karen's bathroom, and soon after, she came storming into our house, screaming about how dare we make her look bad to her friends and how selfish we are we couldn't even spare one bathroom. She said we didn't deserve all this space with just us. I told Karen to get the hell out of my house or I would be calling the cops. She finally left and the party wrapped up shortly after. 
Backyard Remodel After the party incidents, we decided we needed to clearly define the backyard and build a fence. While we were spending the money, we decided to update the patio, put in a fire pit, and an outdoor kitchen. While the contractor was on site, nosy Karen had come to investigate. Since the fence would be the last thing built, I was vague and just stuck to telling her about the patio update. You could see her face light up because, of course, in her mind, what's ours is hers. When the worker started on the fence, Karen came out screaming for work to stop. I went outside and told the workers to keep working and told Karen to butt out. Of course, in true Karen fashion, she called the cops. What happened next was hilarity on my part after explaining to the cop that we were building a fence on our property and the landlord, of which Karen was not, knew about it. When the cop gave Karen a stern lecture, I thought her head was going to explode. She went back into her house and slammed the sliding door so hard it sounded like something cracked. We got our fence and I thought that would be the end, but of course not. The Boat Incident One day, Billy Bob entered the picture and he was as much of a terrible neighbor as Karen. He would throw cigarette butts and empty beer cans over our fence for disrespecting his woman. I didn't know Paradise had trailer trash, but Billy Bob is the epitome of the stereotype. Billy Bob has a boat, a 30-foot fishing boat to be precise. Of course, that side of the duplex only has 15 feet of dockage. Since we have so much dockage and only one boat, we rent out the other dockage spots as month to month. People come and go, so if we don't receive rent from them by the end of the month and the boat disappears, we think nothing of it. We had a renter who tied up their boat on the property line. But Billy Bob wanted to park his boat and needed that space. Karen and Billy Bob posed as us, we were out of town, told the renters to be gone at the end of the month, and then parked Billy Bob's boat on the dockage. I only found out about it weeks later because the renter left a nasty review on the rental site we use. They said we were rude and went back on the verbal agreement to let them stay for three more months. I was like, what the f is all this? After a phone call, I quickly put two and two together. I called the cops who told Karen and Billy Bob they need to move their boat or it would be towed. The equivalent of it anyway. Karen and Billy Bob started screaming, the boat is fully on their property. It isn't then changed to, no one can own the water. True, but a seawall is deeded, that we are liars, and at some point, Billy Bob punched a cop and went to jail. I felt bad for the cops, so I took them all snacks the next day with a note apologizing for neighbor drama. I ended up winning my small claim suit against them for lost rental income but of course haven't seen a dime. I eventually convinced the dockage renters to come back and gave them a few months free as compensation. Final revenge. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Get ready for a juicy justice boner. So with the collapsing market, we were trying to figure out what to do with our savings when a perfect opportunity opened up. The landlord who owned both properties was in desperate need of some cash and was tired of managing the property from 2,000 miles away. Because, of course, Karen is a Karen and called him weekly for every little thing. His only stipulation was, we let the poor single mom who has been his renter for eight years finish her lease, which is up in July. Since we just have money, we were trying to reinvest, and because now we get to control our neighbors, heck yeah, we jumped on that! Since we didn't need a realtor or a mortgage, and an inspection had been done just a year ago for the old landlord to refinance, Everything closed in just under two weeks. Karen was aware of a change of ownership. We registered the property under an LLC, but didn't know who. Until eight days ago. I went over to Karen's house and knocked on the door. Karen answered with a, What the frick do you want, Kuda? I smiled, handed her our landlord information, and sweetly reminded her rent was due by Friday. 
but she could just hand me the check if that was easier. I've always heard descriptions of people's faces turning white, but this was the first time I have actually seen it. I told Karen that we are honoring her lease until the end of July, but afterwards, she had better make plans to move because we intended to remodel it before the next tenants moved in. Bye, woman. Edit. A lot of people misunderstood the beginning. Let's call our side of the duplex Duplex OP. The other duplex is Duplex Karen. We purchased Duplex OP. After we bought it, Duplex OP was no longer a rental. Duplex OP and Duplex Karen were for sale independently, but we only had the money to buy Duplex OP. Duplex Karen is still a rental because it has never sold. Now we own both Duplex OP and Duplex Karen. Duplex Karen is still a rental. Duplex OP is still not a rental. When we made property improvements to Duplex OP, it was ours and not a rental. Update number one. Not much to update, folks. Karen and family's lease isn't up until the end of July. Rent has been paid on time. As far as I know, she doesn't have a new place lined up. We've served her 30-day notice. We will not be renewing the lease. We also offered in writing that we will prorate July and waive the termination fee if they want to leave before the end of the lease. Beyond the nearly weekly loud parties and having to call the police because the kids were throwing lit fireworks at our boat, not much beyond the norm. Okay, really, 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 really good story. Very satisfying. How does someone think what Karen did was okay? Just because you live there longer doesn't mean you're entitled to other people's stuff, you freaking dingaling doorknob. All right, this story's called Leave an Upper Decker in Our Toilets? Get banned from every hotel in town. Tried posting this in Pro Revenge, got a very good reception before mods removed it and said it didn't fit there. Maybe it fits here. Because this is from r slash regular revenge, but it's the pro category. I work at the front desk of a very very popular hotel brand in a college town. The university was hosting a flag football intramural competition, and we had a team staying with us from out of town. Well, as the title says, they left upper deckers <laughs> in three of our toilets. For those of you who don't feel like going to Urban Dictionary, that's when you go number two into the toilet tank, so when you flush the toilet, it gets everywhere. The owners of our hotel own a Another one in town and the school the team came from immediately got out on the do not stay list as well as a cleaning fee for each toilet which is great but i married to the head of the maintenance department and my dear hubs had to clean the mess so i was not satisfied i'm good friends with most of the other front desk agents at the hotels in town and spent the next week telling them what happened and getting the team out on their do not rent lists because who wants to deal with that crap i didn't think i'd get to see this come back around but fast forward six months and university is holding another competition same out of town team calls the hotel trying to book only to be told they aren't welcome coach plays it off because there are plenty of hotels in that town and if y'all are too good to take our money, then fine. Only to find out that they can't stay at any of them. And the ones that they could stay at aren't good quality. Coach calls us angry, demanding we let them stay, blah, blah, blah. I'm able to double down and cite previous behavior, stating that we just can't take the chance. I heard through the grapevine they ended up having to stay 30 minutes away from our town. Play crappy games, win crappy prizes. Literally. Well, I guess the win crappy prizes isn't too literal. But, uh, well, while it isn't the nicest thing in the world to punish the whole school for the actions of a few idiots. However, the coach didn't seem to show very much regret for the actions his players uh, actioned. Then again, the way they wrote this made it seem like they didn't give him a reason until the very end. Then again, OP doesn't want their husband to have to clean up poopies again. So it goes on the adult children that pooed <laughs> in the toilet tanks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.